Hello, I'm Angus Forster, and I lead research and development at Vaxis, a company developing technology specifically designed to improve vaccination, immunologically, logistically, and for the patient. I'd like to thank the organizers of the conference and the session chairs for providing this opportunity for me to present our technology and its intended benefits, but also to discuss challenges behind skin vaccination, which is far from a new concept. I will end the talk by looking at the opportunities for our technology and microarray patches or masks in general, especially in the context of pandemic vaccination response. Following the talk, you will have the opportunity to ask questions of Tom Lake, our SVP of Strategic Alliances and Commercialization based in the US. Being based in Brisbane, Australia, with 99% of the company and in the wrong time zone, Tom has kindly offered to say me at a very early start. This is how we see the future of vaccination. Apply to the skin, press the button, wait 10 seconds and remove. That's it. It's a better scientific approach that can dramatically improve a country's ability to respond to a pandemic. And it's also a way to improve the reach of vaccination for a broad range of infectious diseases. So what do we have? High densities of immune cells live just under the surface of the skin in the epidermis and upper dermis. Our technology uses a small polymer patch, shown lower left, that has thousands of very short micro projections at a high density across the skin contacting surface. Each micro projection is around 300 microns in length and just reaches the stratum corneum. We use our patch to, to deposit vaccine right amongst the immune cells in the skin where they can rapidly bring it to the lymph node. We dispense liquid vaccine formulations onto these projections showing up a right, using a technology developed in-house that allows accurate deposition of picolytic sized drops to many projections at once. These small discrete drops also dry very rapidly, and this rapid drying process of the vaccine formulation has been shown to lead to improved thermostability. The needle and syringe has been an effective way of delivering medicine since around 1853, but as we all know, it has significant drawbacks and complexity is not typically preferred by patients. It is also an especially challenging delivery technology for use in pandemics and for enabling access to vaccines in low and middle income countries, requiring skilled administration and cold chain maintenance. Our hypothesis is that by removing the needle, targeting the abundant immune cells in the skin and drying down the vaccine, that we can transform the process of vaccination and improve vaccine effectiveness. It's important to note that we are still a couple of years away from completing clinical development and scaling up the manufacture to supply the quantities of product that are needed in pandemic response or for routine vaccination. And I will talk more about this critical challenge in product development and how we are addressing it. We have a number of well-funded programs with leading partners that we are currently working on. A program with the Gates Foundation on measles and rubella to improve access and vaccination rates in countries where children are still suffering from vaccine preventable disease. A collaborative project with Merck and a recent project with the US government in pandemic influenza response. But also other projects across different infectious diseases and cancer vaccines. So this number of projects keeps us very busy and the Vaxis team currently just has over 70 staff working across scientific, engineering, and other disciplines. We are not the only ones who think this approach to vaccination is an important development and opportunity. The Vaccine Innovation Prioritization Strategy aims to drive vaccine product innovation to better meet country needs for immunization coverage, coverage and equity by providing clarity to manufacturers and partners for investment decisions related to vaccine innovation. This prioritization strategy recently concluded, recommending microarray patches as a first choice for vaccine innovation. It's also clear that MAP technology can potentially meet the aims of priorities two and three, providing heat stable and controlled temperature chain vaccines. And as I will touch on later in the talk, a technology well suited to barcoding and traceability. One of the defining features of our MAP technology is a high density micro projection array, which we think offers benefits for improved immune responses. Due to the high density of micro projections, we need to apply the MAP to the skin with sufficient speed to enable penetration 
of the micro projections through the stratum corneum. This is achieved by the use of an applicator device which contains the map and also ensures consistent delivery of the product and reduced dependency on the user. When the applicator is triggered, as shown in the previous video, the map flies at around 20 meters per second for a short distance before engaging the skin. Published work has shown that this dynamic application results in cell death at the application site, which is significantly greater than with ID, and ID injection. This damage event generates alarm signals, damage associated molecular patterns, in combination with proximal delivery of the antigen from the high density array. This co-localization of vaccine, cell death, and alarm signals is a hypothesis for why we have seen significant dose bearing in preclinical models. Showing improved immune responses in models is great. We have now shown the benefit in clinical studies. We've published data from three clinical trials run in Australia, the most recent of which was the largest mass vaccination study run to date, and also the first to look at reduced vaccine doses delivered by MAP in comparison to standard dose given by needle and syringe. The study used an H1N1 egg derived split influenza antigen. At doses similar to needle and syringe, shown in grey, we saw statistically higher functional antibody titers using our HD map when delivering to both the upper arm site over the deltoid muscle, shown in blue, and the volar forearm, shown in red. We saw higher titers at day 7, day 21, and after day 60, which was the final time point of the study. The biggest increase in titer compared to needle and syringe was seen at day, to day 7 time point. We also took the HD map to lipid dose down to one sixth of the standard needle and syringe dose, down to 2.5 micrograms of HA protein delivered by MAP, compared to 15 micrograms of HA given by intramuscular injection. As you can see from the graph, at this lower MAP dose, our functional antibody responses, shown in green, overlaid those with the higher dose given IM, and were maintained up to date 60. We have more work to do with additional seasonal, seasonal influenza strains to show that this performance is product relevant, but this was an encouraging first clinical result with lower doses. The ability to use lower vaccine doses could be hugely beneficial in a pandemic vaccine rollout, as shown in the table, in terms of making more doses of vaccine available more quickly. As part of the same clinical study with the H1N1 influenza antigen, Product was placed on stability for up to 12 months at a range of temperatures, 2 to 8, 25, and 40 degrees centigrade. Our dry vaccine product showed no significant decrease in HA potency for 12 months at all conditions, whereas significant losses in potency occurred after one month at high temperature for the commercial liquid vaccine. The vaccine coating on the microarray patch, shown in the scanning electron micrograph image, showed no degradation on storage. This type of stability performance opens up the opportunity for different models of vaccine storage and distribution. So I've talked about the significant potential upside to vaccination with our new HD map technology. Time to move on to why there are no map vaccine products currently marketed. The reason isn't immunology. Skin vaccination is not new. It's one of the first approaches tried to prove vaccination. It isn't through lack of interest. Our friends at the path MAP Centre of Excellence produced this diagram showing a number of companies and groups around the world working on this technology. Some of the companies listed have been developing MAP products for over 20 years for a range of medicines currently administered by needle and syringe. So what is the barrier? In our view, the biggest challenge to MAP developers and the reason why the needle and syringe is such a tough competitor is scalability of manufacturing and cost of goods. We have invested early in developing a finished product manufacturing process that can enable high volume, low cost, aseptic production of finished product. And I'll talk a little bit more about the individual manufacturing steps and the approach we're taking to de-risk scale up. Our process is based on sterile incoming components, the applicator and map, disposable technology for dispensing vaccine, and a focus on developing in-process tests to assure the quality of finished goods. We've developed and processed tests to determine where the vaccine formulation goes on the map when dispensed, and feedback loops from the dispensing system to help quantify volume dispensed. 
We are not done yet, but in combination with German pharmaceutical automation specialist Harry Hofflinger, we are de-risking the key process steps in Australia and Germany before finalising the pilot design and commencing build. But before I talk about manufacture, at the centre of the process, and of course the finished product is the applicator device itself, which combines a vaccine-coated HD map within a single-use disposable applicator. The applicator delivers the vaccine map to the skin consistently, removing most of the user dependency, and has also been, de been designed to provide feedback to the user that the dose has been administered. The applicator also packages and protects the sterile product from contamination and moisture ingress. The device elements have also been designed for logistics, both as components and as a finished product, to reduce the unnecessary packaging and cost, but also designed for manufacture. The body of the applicator is made from aluminum and the part count is kept low. We have aimed to make the total cost of goods, excluding the vaccine, at least comparable to, and potentially less than, a pre-filled needle and syringe. Known in this schematic is the intended end-to-end -end manufacturing process from device components through to finished packed product. The applicator components are made from metal stamping, the HD map is injection molded, and we are developing the aseptic process for scale dispensing of vaccine. Metal stamping is a widely used and established technology capable of exceptionally high volume manufacture. The video I'm about to play shows the applicator body being made as two parts on the same line. A foil aluminum sheet enters the press where a multi-stage st stamping tool forms and cuts each component. Please excuse the non-GMP nature of the current process. HD map manufacture is via injection moulding. The challenge has been designing the process to form the microprojection array. We've been improving this process over a number of years with our development partner Cyrus Technologies in Singapore. The next video shows our early work using a single cavity tool producing one part per shot and a square map. We're now moving to a multi cavity tool and changing the shape of the map to circular to improve product and process performance. The video shows the injection moulding machine, the tool opening and the map dropping out of the tool and the lead in plastic being lifted away. It's the tool opening, the sprue or lead in plastic being taken away and the patch dropping out. Tool closes, plastic injected. Tool opens. Patch drops out, lead and plastic taken away. However, the most challenging aspect is the controlled vaccine formulation deposition onto the microprojection array. As mentioned, we achieve this with controlled dispensing of small droplets of vaccine solution to each individual microprojection with a multi nozzle array which exactly matches the number and geometry of the patch. This is how we currently produce material for clinical studies. But doing this at scale is challenging. The next video shows our proof of concept line for performing this step. In the video, you will see a screenshot of the rapid image QC analysis of each map positioned onto the applicator top. The vision system checks the microprojection position, feeding this information directly to the dispensing head, which makes small adjustments to align the nozzle array to the exact position of the microprojections. The image analysis can also detect defects in the map. The print head dispenses one drop to all 1600 micro projections on the array simultaneously, and the video shows an output of 200 parts per minute. We are working on de-risking key steps in the design ahead of the final design and build of the first pilot production line required to meet phase three manufacturing requirements. 
but as you can see, the timeline between build and first clinical runs is about two years, meaning that the risking is taking place now, well ahead of phase two studies. In the last part of this talk, I want to touch on the opportunity of MAP technology for vaccination. We've obviously come a long way in the speed of vaccine development in the last 18 months, but many aspects of vaccination have not changed in 70 years. To mass vaccinate populations, we still need to bring people together in long queues and have trained nurses and doctors administer the vaccine and then repeat this for the second dose and probably boosters for 8 billion people around the world. US-based healthcare charity CARE estimates that for every dollar spent on vaccine doses, governments need to invest an extra $5 in getting them into people's arms, including on salaries for healthcare workers, information campaign, campaigns, and cold chain logistics. We've commenced work combining the SARS-CoV-2 Hexapro spike protein with our HD map technology in collaboration with researchers at the University of Queensland, Australia. A preprint of the paper is available online and is soon to be published. What the team showed was that the Hexapro spike protein could be dried onto the map and stabilised. In the mouse, vaccination with the HD map was superior to ID delivery, inducing neutralising antibodies to a range of variants, including the alpha and beta, but also showing 100% protection from challenge with two doses of Hexapro given by map with or without the adjuvant QS21. We are working to move this project into first time in human clinical studies in early 2022. We also see an opportunity to combine the benefit of mRNA vaccines with HD map delivery, especially for pandemic response. You would have heard about mRNA vaccine development in the previous talk from Professor Colin Booth and the benefits to candidate selection, development and manufacturing speed. Combining this with the potential for targeted skin delivery directly to immune cells, the benefits of no needle and the potential for reduced cold chain requirement is exciting. However, there are significant challenges, especially with vaccine formulation, due to the use of lipid nanoparticles, but we are making progress to dispense and stabilise these types of formulations. And my final slide also very much looks to the future of vaccination and vaccination logistics. The ability of devices such as ours to enable an entirely traceable and connected approach from vaccine production through to use and disposal. We've been working with partners to look at the options for managing logistics, but in particular, in the case of self-administration or administration in the home or remote settings, the ability to authenticate the products and integrity and point of use, to know when the dose has been given and also to provide online support to dosing alongside instructions for use to ensure correct usage. These opportunities converging represents an exciting look forward to the future of vaccination. Thank you for your attention.